It always seems so stupid that the Navy would literally spend millions on training so many AWs, elite sailors who were known for their far above average academic and physical abilities, and that is some art and that. And that at some arbitrary point during that training, the Navy was willing to send those naval assets out to the fleet with no job instead of finding other high performance job options for them. Jobs that didn't require such intense swimming. And as I stood there at attention, absolutely sure I'd be handed my transfer orders to some godforsaken Navy ship in dry dock somewhere to start my career as a paint chipper. I was blown away. This actually is what the instructor said. Okay, Harbaugh, you did all your push-ups. You're going to continue on to your A school in Millington, Tennessee. A chance to qualify to fly in the Viking was now in reach. And now after months of mind-numbing fear of being drowned by these sadistic criminals, I would finally be given that chance. One month later, while in the barracks at NAS Millington, we, heard all the, we all heard the news of an RSS student dying in the pool during Sharks and Daisies. It was the, we told you so moment, so many of us feared. To this day, I get berated, insulted, and threatened by a handful of the old diehard rescue swimmers, most of whom never witnessed the nadir of this training period, or excuse me, this training prior to Marecki's death. Who, all call, who call all of us who DOR'd, pussies who can't hack it. Whereas those students who I serve with say, Harbaugh speaks the truth. If the students are truly to blame, why did the Navy cover up the incident for so long? Why were all five instructors found guilty in the trial? And why did the U.S. Navy drastically change the RSS training curriculum so as not to allow any instructors to touch the students? To this day, I extre I'm extremely proud of how the Navy finally corrected course and got back to proper training methods without the sadism. And as one D World War II and career Navy fighter pilot referred to it, Without that jockstrap mentality, 33 years of these memories flashing through my mind have never left me, and to this day I have significant panic attacks while swimming in the local gym pool, where I go for therapy nearly every day of the week. And to the detractors, at this point I think I'll let my service record speak for itself as to if I truly was a quitter or a loser who couldn't hack it. My time flying aboard the S3 Viking from 1989 to 1992 with 275 missions across the globe, with 42 consecutive night combat missions and being aboard the first Viking ever in combat, with medals and awards that set records that stand to this day. 20 years ago, I swore an oath to a huge gathering of Pearl Harbor survivors to quote, remember Pearl Harbor and keep America alert, upon them making me a life honorary member. I also will remember Lee Marecki and go to my grave knowing we RSS students who stood up to the power, the power hungry and sadistic back in those days did the right thing, as apparently we still do to this day.